Professor Dave and Chegg here. Now that we have a firm understanding of acidity and basicity, we are ready to understand buffer solutions. These are special solutions that have interesting properties, so let's go in for a closer look. A buffer is a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base, or a weak base and its conjugate acid, that bestows the solution with an ability to resist changes in pH when small amounts of acid or base are added to it. An example of a buffer solution would be one containing acetic acid and sodium acetate, which provides the acetate ion. This comprises a conjugate acid-base pair for acetic acid, which is a weak acid. Another such example involving a weak base and its conjugate acid would be a buffer solution made from ammonia and ammonium chloride, which provides the ammonium ion. Just one proton transfer separates these substances. Buffer solutions function as follows. The Ka of acetic acid is larger than the Kb of acetate, so the forward reaction of the top equilibrium will be more prevalent, and there will be hydronium ions in solution. Therefore, if we add a little bit of strong base, it will react with the few hydronium ions present. And since the ionization of acetic acid is in equilibrium, removing hydronium will push the equilibrium to the right, and more acetic acid will ionize to restore the hydronium concentration back to its original value, as we would expect from our knowledge of Le Chatelier's principle. This means the pH will change very little, or not at all. Likewise, if we add a strong acid, it will simply react with the acetate ions instead of water molecules, which will only generate more acetic acid. So this too will have very little effect on the pH, since no hydronium or hydroxide is formed in that ionization. This diagram shows the ways that the equilibrium between acetic acid and acetate will shift if acid or base are added, and the direction it must shift after the fact in order to equilibrate. We can start with equal amounts of the conjugate acid-base pair. If we add more acid, we can see that the equilibrium shifts to the left, and it will move to achieve equilibrium. If we add base, the opposite will occur. Whichever way we go, the system will balance and resist change in pH. Let's do one calculation. What would be the pH of a buffer solution that is 0.1 molar in acetic acid and 0.1 molar in sodium acetate, given the following Ka for acetic acid? We already know that the Ka for acetic acid is greater than the Kb for acetate, so we can conclude that the equilibrium will shift right. Let's go ahead and put these initial concentrations into an icebox. That'll be 0.1 for the acid and conjugate base, and there's no hydronium yet, or it is at least negligible. Then we will put negative x for the change in acetic acid, and x for the change of the products, since we are moving forward. Hence, these will be the equilibrium expressions. We plug those into the equilibrium expression and solve for x, which will be the hydronium concentration. And from there, we just take the negative log to arrive at the pH, which will be 4.74. So by applying our knowledge of acid-base equilibria, we can understand how a buffer solution is able to maintain a constant pH value. So as we can see, buffer solutions are able to resist a change in pH when small amounts of strong acid or base are added to them due to the equilibrium that exists between the weak acid or base and its conjugate. But as we have said, this is for small amounts of acid or base. Every buffer solution has a limited capacity to resist a change in pH, and once a certain amount of acid or base has been added, it will no longer be able to function. As we add more and more acid or base, the buffering action of the solution will diminish, and once all of the weak acid or weak base has been exhausted, the solution will no longer have any buffer capacity, and there will be no resistance to change in pH. As we can see here, in the beaker on the left, we have a buffered solution at pH 8, and the addition of a small amount of acid will not have a substantial effect on the pH, which is why the beaker in the middle experiences only a small change in pH, despite the addition of acid. But once we add too much acid, as we can see from the dramatic increase in volume in the beaker on the right, the buffer capacity of the solution is exhausted, and the pH drops all the way to 1.53. We will define the buffer capacity of a solution as being the amount of acid or base that can be added to a certain volume of the buffer solution before the pH changes significantly, usually by at least one pH unit. 
Buffer capacity will certainly depend on the amount of acid and base that are in solution, which is why a buffer solution that is one molar in acetic acid and one molar in sodium acetate will have a much greater buffer capacity than a solution that is 0.1 molar in each substance. These solutions will have the same pH because they involve precisely the same equilibrium, but the more acetic acid molecules and acetate ions there are, the more molecules of strong acid or base that can be neutralized, and hence a greater resistance to change in pH as acid or base is continually added. In discussing buffer solutions, there is an equation that must be mentioned, and it is the henderson hasselbalch equation. Before we discuss the implications of this equation, let's first see how it is derived. If we start from the Ka expression for a generalized acid, we might want to solve for hydronium concentration in order to discuss the pH of a solution. To do this, we multiply both sides by the concentration of Ha, and divide both sides by the concentration of A-. That will give us this. Now we know to get pH we simply take the negative log, so let's take the negative log of both sides. The log of the product on the right side can become the sum of two different logs because of the rules of logarithms, so this is what we end up with. From this we can simply express a few things differently. We know that the negative log of hydronium concentration is pH. The negative log of Ka is called the pKa of an acid. And because of the rules of logarithms, we can change this negative log to a positive log for mathematical simplicity if we flip this fraction upside down. That gives us the henderson hasselbalch equation, which is useful for preparing or analyzing buffer solutions. There are two contexts in which this can be used. First, when looking at an existing buffer solution, if the pKa of the acid involved is known, and we have a way to measure the concentration of both the acid and the conjugate base, then we can plug these values in to solve for the pH of the solution. But in addition to this, when preparing buffer solutions, we know that we will want to use the acid and conjugate base in equal amounts. If we do so, then this numerator and denominator will be equal, meaning this fraction will be equal to 1, and the log of 1 is always 0, so this term disappears completely, leaving us with pH equals pKa. That means that when preparing a buffer solution, if the acid and conjugate base are used in equal concentrations, the pH of the solution will be equal to the pKa of the acid. Since there are so many acids with pKa's tabulated that we can refer to, this will allow us to generate a buffer solution of virtually any pH by selecting an acid with a pKa that is equal to the desired pH of the buffer solution. With that, we now know about buffers, buffer capacity, and the henderson hasselbalch equation, which gives us a richer understanding of acid-base equilibria. Professor Dave Furchegg, see you next time.